in the headline. President Buhari orders security agencies to rescue 50 remaining abducted train passengers alive. Troops of Operation Hadin K hands over two rescued Chibok girls to ch two children to Borno government. Chief Justice of Nigeria replies Supreme Court justices on deplorable conditions of courts. Away from Nigeria, over 150 killed after strong earthquake hits Afghanistan. Hello and welcome to Trust News Update. I am Ayuba Ilya. Thank you for joining. And now the details. President Muhammadu Buhari has insisted that the, the 51 or more victims of the Kaduna Abuja train attack who are still in captivity must be brought home alive. The kidnappers had demanded for the release of their own children and despite governments acceding to the demand, only 11 of the victims were released. However, the president has approved that government will continue to its will continue on its two-lane kinetic and non-kinetic approach to secure the passengers' safe release. President Buhari welcomed the return of the recently released passengers to their families and loved ones. The Nigerian army says it has rescued two Chibok girls during its operations in Bama and Goza local government area of Bruno State. The theater commander of Operation Hadin K, Major General Christopher Musa, who disclosed this in its recent operations update, said that two Chibok girls were rescued in two separate operations. Musa, who stated that 57,000 Boko Haram terrorists have surrendered and are undergoing rehabilitation and investigation, urged communities not to trade with terrorists. Other ones are encouraged to surrender. Now, for those ones who are still in the bushes, what we are telling them is that they still have the opportunity to come out. They can see, since the other ones have, come, uh, have, have, have surrendered, nothing has happened to them. They are being treated nicely, treated humanely. And so they have that freedom. Let them not listen to their commanders. That if you trade with them, they are a bunch of criminals. They have no respect for human life. We have seen what they've done to the scrap uh, metal people, how they just kill them all because they were doing trading and because they were interacting with them. So people should avoid them. We have troops. We want to ensure that farmers go back to their farms, be able to farm very well. Last year, the harvest was good. We want this year the harvest to be better. One of the operations that was conducted in that general area actually displaced most of the terrorists in that general area. And uh, Hawaii Joseph was one of the people that uh, the troops found and uh, brought back to uh, Burma. From there, she was taken to the hospital, checked, and uh, she uh, was uh, being rehabilitated. Uh, secondly, is, uh, is Mary, Mary Dauda, who was rescued on the 14th of uh, July. She was rescued around the general area of Ngoche, that's in the uh, 26th Force Brigade area uh, in Goza general area. Troops on patrol also during Operation Desert Sanity need uh, encountered after clearing some of the uh, areas we uh, met her and rescued her with her uh, baby and her daughter to Goza uh, for onward movement to this general area. President Muhammad Buhari has forwarded the names of seven ministerial nominees to the Senate for screening and confirmation. Buhari's letter was read on the floor of the Senate on Tuesday by the President Ahmed, by the Senate President Ahmed Lawan at the start of plenary. The report. Following the resignation of some cabinet ministers ahead of the 2023 general election, President Muhammad Buhari this Tuesday forwarded names of nominees to fill the vacuum. The nominees are to replace ministers in his cabinet who had resigned to contest the presidential primaries of the All Progressive Congress as well as other offices. I have the honor to forward the underlisted ministerial nominees for confirmation by the Senate. One, Harry Ikechuku Iko, Abia State. Two, Umana Okon Umana, Akwaibom State. Three, 
ekuma nkama joseph nkama ebony state for good luck nana opia imo state five umar ibrahim eliakub kano state six ademola adewole adegorie ondo state and seven odum udi river state copies of the curriculum vitae are attached here with it is my hope that this exercise will receive the usual expeditious consideration of the distinguished members of the senate of the federal republic of nigeria please accept mr senate president the assurances of my highest regards signed yours sincerely muhammad ubuhari some of the cabinet ministers who resigned for the purpose of contesting the presidential primaries include Koswila Akpabio, Rotimi Ameji, Obonaya Onu, and Chukwemeka Mwajuba. Three senators belonging to the ruling All Progressives Congress have resigned their membership of the ruling party. The lawmakers are Senators Ahmad Baba Keita, Lawan Yahaya Gumau Bochi, and Francis Ali Mikena Edo North. The report. The nominations were contained in a letter signed by the National Secretary of the People's Democratic Party, PDP, Senator Samuel Ayaun. The letter read at Tuesday's plenary by the Senate President, Ahmed Lawa, indicates that Senator Philip Ajuda is nominated by the party to replace the former minority leader, Senator Inaya Abarebe. Abarebe last week formally announced his defection from the People's Democratic Party to the All Progressive Grand Alliance, Afga. The PDP. The President of the Senate, Your Excellency, confirmation of the Senate caucus nomination of Senator Philip Tanimu Aduda as Senate Minority Leader. The above subject matter hereby refers the leadership of the People's Democratic Party, PDP, is pleased to confirm to you the nomination of Senator Philip Tanimu Aduda as the new Senate Minority Leader. The nomination of Senator Aduda is for the replacement of the vacant seat of the Minority Leader created by the defection of Senator Einaya Abaribe to the All Progressives Grand Alliance, ABGA. Please kindly accord Senator Philip Tanim Aduda all the necessary cooperation arise due the office. Accept the assurance of my highest, my esteemed regards. Signed, Senator Samuel N. Anyau, National Secretary. The opposition party, PDP, also stated that Senator Chukuka Utazi is now the new minority whip, a position previously held by Senator Ajuda. Now, the Chief Justice of Nigeria, Ibrahim Tunku Mohammed, has responded to a letter signed by 14 justices of the Supreme Court lamenting the poor state of affairs in courts. The aggrieved justices who accused the CJN of failing to address critical issues also complained of lack of presidential accom residential accommodation and vehicles at the court. The justices, while decrying lack of legal research assistance, despite the magnitude of cases being adjudicated, also lamented the poor state of electricity, which has made working very challenging. In his response, the CGN, in a statement signed by his spokesperson, Ahuraka Yusuf Isa, said that the court is also affected by the social uh, by the economic and socio-political climate prevailing in the country. Now, Barrister Abubakar Azubrei is a Kaduna-based legal practitioner, and he joins us via phone uh, to talk about this. Now, the Chief Justice, thank you for joining us on the news update now. Abubakar. It, it's a 
a great pleasure for me. Thank you very much. All right. Now, the Chief Justice in Niger of Nigeria, uh, Justice Ibrahim Tanku, has replied to the letter of the 14 justices uh, saying that judges are to be seen and not to be heard. This is possibly the first time the internal, uh, the, the internal issues in the Apex uh, Court is made public. What, you know, public does this, what kind of uh, implication does this create for the members of the public? First of all, I must say that this is a very shameful uh, scenario. This is uh, very denigrating, and this is eroding the confidence that the public has in the judiciary. Uh, in, the, in the over 100 years of Nigerian judiciary, there has never been a case like this, especially at the level of the court of records, not to talk of the Apex Court, which is the Supreme Court of Nigeria. Uh, when Justice uh, Tanko Muhammad assumed the leadership of the Nigerian judiciary, most people thought that it would be a rosy moment for the judiciary. No sooner had he taken office than a lot of things uh, came up which needed his attention, but which to me he was too weak to address. The appointment of judges of the courts of records, especially at the high court level, the level of impunity that is involved in the appointment of judges, especially of the high courts, the level of personal attachment, parental and pecunial uh, alliance in the appointment of federal high court judges and other state judges were some of the things that first characterized his tenure. In fact, most of the people appointed to the high court in his tenure are people related to judges of the Supreme Court, judges of the Court of Appeal, judges of the High Court. They are either their children or their brothers. In fact, the Nigerian Bar Association raised the issue last year when it appealed to President Muhammad Buhari not to swear in 70 federal High Court judges that were appointed by the NJC, headed by Justice Tanko. But the President didn't hit to that. Then now, the issue of accommodation, the issue of logistics, the issue of legal assistance, the issue of uh, equipment in chambers have now come up. And Justice uh, Tanko is replying that these people are dancing in the market square naked. That is not the important issue, and that is not the way to address it. The way to address it is to take concrete steps towards curbing these things that have been happening. So probably, what, maybe probably why he's saying this is because all the options, you know, to solve this problem internally have not been exhausted. So perhaps that's why he's saying this. It is not true, sir. It is not true. Because this will not be the first time that such concerns are being raised. I just told you about the appointment of judges last year. Judges were appointed three weeks ago, three, just three weeks ago. Take the stock. Has he taken any steps or has the NJC taken any steps to address those issues? It is when you address issues that you will talk like that. Has he provided those things that they needed in the office? Is coronavirus or oh. any social ill that is affecting the world or Nigerian system applicable to the judiciary when the judiciary is continuously oh. having its own money that is due to it? from the Federation account. All right, so Abu Yes. All right, so what's the way out of this now? Given the fact that the CJN himself is, he, I mean, he presides over the NJC, uh, the Nigerian National Judicial Council, which itself is supposed to be the body that, you know, checkmates some of these things in the judiciary. So I think the entire, the entire National Judicial Council needs reform. And the Chief Justice of Nigeria, as he stands now, I think... He either, he either needs to move or the reform should take over his position. Because this is the lowest ebb that the judiciary has come to. You will not appreciate this until you know how the Nigerian judiciary was respected globally. This is the first time that the judiciary is being dragged to the mood. So I think the first thing to do is a reform of the National Judicial Council. All right. All right. All right. Thank you. All right. Thank you so much, uh, Abubakar Al Zubay. We appreciate you joining us on the news update.
It's a great pleasure for me. Thank you very much. You're welcome. All right, that was uh, Kaduna Bay's uh, legal practitioner, Abu Bakr Zubay, giving his perspectives on the recent issue raised, I mean, the back and forth between the Ni uh, Chief Justice of Nigeria and some justices of uh, the Federal High Court. Now, uh, we'll take a short breather and coming up shortly. The return of olden days kitchen tools. Details and more after the break. Join us again. Thank you for staying. If you are just joining, you're watching the news update on Trust Television. Here's a reminder of our top stories. President Muhammadu Buhari orders security agencies to rescue 50 remaining abducted train passengers alive. Troops of Operation Hadin K hands over two rescued Chibwa girls, two children, to Borno government. In other news, the Independent National Electoral Commission in the Federal Capital Territory is partnering with the European Union support to democratic governance in Nigeria and a civil society group to mobilize youths across the nation's capital to participate in the ongoing nationwide continuous voter registration exercise. The Youth, count, the youth Vote Count Awareness Campaign 2.0 began on Monday and is already drawing out a large number of youths to register and get their permanent voters' cards. Trust TV's Aisha Salihu was there and now reports. Youth Vote Count, a non-partisan initiative launched by the European Union with the aim of getting young people to participate more in the electoral process, is not only encouraging youth to register for their permanent voters' cards, but also to ensure they collect the cards when they are ready and head to the polls to vote come 2023. The entire objective or the objective of the campaign is just to connect young people with centers of power to get them to be a little bit more um, proactive in the governance process and to begin to shift culture and perception of young people. Resident Electoral Commissioner for the FCT, Yahya Bello, said the commission welcomes the initiative and is prepared to ensure that all eligible voters who make it to the week-long Youth Vote Count Campaign Mega Music Concert are registered. INET has come up to support this initiative by deploying more than 50 IBM machines here in this venue already. IBM has also deployed more than 150 staff to ensure that the program goes smoothly. Any other person who has partaken and is still partaking in the continued voter registration exercise, the TBC will not be ready immediately now and after the exercise. Other partners championing the initiative say the mega music concert is part of efforts to address voter apathy among the youth in Nigeria, beginning with the registration and collection of permanent voters' cards. The youth population on the voters' register was about 51.1% in 2019. But as you can see from the images, from the videos across the country, there is interest on the part of young people to register and to vote in the next um, election. And for the partners, our contribution to this is providing them that platform and that opportunity to get on the register. With the efforts so far, many Nigerians who are yet to participate in the exercise wonder if INEC 
will extend the June 30 deadline for the registration of PVCs. The Commission has a very good history of complying with court orders. That's what I can assure you. Um, I understand from the court papers that the Commission was asked to come on the 29th of this month to give course and submit certain documents. We are going to do that. But remember, once a matter goes to court, it is subject to, to, to talk on it. So I won't say more than that. Thank you. Aisha Salihu. Trust TV News, Abuja. Now, old kitchen tools such as grinding stone, coal pot, and clay pot, among others, are gradually fading out in many homes as people gradually embrace modern cooking utensils. Despite this paradigm shift, many people still prefer the traditional ones as they can be readily seen in their homes. In this report, our correspondent takes a look at how housewives are returning to the old kitchen utensils amidst the current economic realities. These utensils belong to the yesteryears and can hardly be found in many homes in the city. Those who use them say they prefer them to modern kitchen utensils. Meanwhile, as modernity takes its toll on these and many others, some housewives in Oshun State are returning to old kitchen tools because of high cost of modern utensils. Mrs. Eunice Babalola says she uses grinding stone and clay pot for her cooking, adding that she enjoys them. In our, in our house, we are still using it because when you use it, when you, when, when you want to cook, eh, you will know that eh, the, that, that is a special taste that you too you, you, you will enjoy. Then, the way you grind it, you will know that eh, eh, this thing is okay. Mr. Gwenle Adebi shares his experience of clay pot and grinding stone in the village while growing up. I know about clay pot because I've lived in the village and where we were using clay pot for cooking. And I know that clay pots, after cooking for four or five hours, the, the cook or the, 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 the soup inside that clay pot will still be hot. Madam Grace Dari say pepper mashed on the grinding stone and soup cooked with clay pots tastes more natural and are believed to be healthy. The advantages in using the stone to grind pepper, it makes our pepper to be very, very smooth and it's very, very tasteful. When you use that, the, the pepper you grind on stone than that of machines. Although others differ with her stand, there is a general consensus that old kitchen utensils are more affordable and readily available for those who still rely on them. Now, the fuel scarcity that spread to Lagos, the nation's commercial capital over the weekend, is now biting harder, with motorists spending full, full nights at uh, filling stations. Abdul Latif Ali reports that many stations have run out of the product, while black marketers now make brisk sales. The report. Checks by Trust TV within Ikeja and its Enveros indicated that most petrol stations that are shut down said they have run out of stock while only few were dispensing. In the few filling stations where the product is available, long queues of between 500 meters and beyond were witnessed as motorists scrabble to get petrol. Commercial and private vehicle owners lamented spending long hours on the queues. At a mobile station along the Abofomi Awolowo Road near the popular island roundabout Ikeja, the queue had extended beyond island onto Aromeri Road. Also at the filling station, many black marketers were observed making bricks business. They sell a 5-liter gallon for 2,500 naira to 3,000 naira, depending on the bargaining power of the motorist. Also, an NNPC retail station along Isheri Ogono Sea Road near Omole was also dispensing with long queue of motorists as at press time. The situation is similar at a private station adjacent Grammar School Police Station, Ojodu, where a liter is sold for 175 naira. The situation has deepened 
the early morning dreadlock emanating from Aina Street, outbound Ogunose Road. And now, away from Nigeria, at least 155 people have been killed and more than 200 others injured after a powerful earthquake hit remote parts of southeastern Afghanistan and neighboring Pakistan, the country's disaster management authority says. The head of the Taliban administration's natural disaster ministry, Mohammad Nassim Haqqani, said that the majority of the deaths were in the province of Paktika, where 100 people were killed and 250 injured. And that's a wrap on Trust News Update. Connect with us via all social media platforms and also subscribe to our YouTube channel to watch more. I am Ayuba Ilya. Thank you for watching.